as many functions as possible. The more functions they serve, then the less work and the less energy it takes to, to run your farm. So uh, we'll just look at some of the components on the farm that we've uh, used permaculture principles to design so you can kind of get an idea of how it works. So um, you start off with, you know, basically draw a map of all the different components on your farm. So you might have, you know, post harvest, cooler, tool shed, greenhouses, roads, um, ponds, uh, market sheds. So you have all these different components and you basically write those down and you try to figure out all the inputs and the outputs that each of those components, components requires. So for example, I, one of the examples I, I wrote on this board here is just the greenhouse. So what are the, the inputs coming into the greenhouse? You have potting soil, you have energy and electricity, you have heat, you have sunlight, shade, uh, water, and then some of the outputs are seedlings. If it's a propagation greenhouse, like this greenhouse produces seedlings, and then you have vegetables or crops if you're if you're producing food. So, for example, you know with electricity, you wouldn't want to put your greenhouse really far from where your electricity source is, because then it's going to be really expensive to run the electricity to that greenhouse because it costs money to run wire underground or above ground or however you're going to get it there. Plus, the greenhouse requires many, many visits. So you wouldn't want to put your greenhouse really far from where you're going to be spending all your time. You want to put your greenhouse where you're going to be spending all your time so you basically don't have to spend a lot of energy checking on that greenhouse because that greenhouse requires a lot of visits. So the things on your farm that require a lot of visits, you want to put those things where you're going to be normally so you don't have to basically go very far or spend a lot of energy going to those, those components. So for example, potting soil, greenhouse needs potting soil because you're basically going to be bringing in seedlings and flats into that greenhouse. So what we did is uh, we used to have our potting soil ingredients stored all over the place. And we had to spend all this energy going there to get them. So what we've done is we moved all the ingredients for our potting soil underneath benches that we used to pot up those flats. And then we mix our own potting soil in that compost tumbler right outside the door. So basically those ingredients can go out there, they only, only takes a few steps, and then back into the table over here, so you don't have to travel very far as you move those ingredients around. Likewise, this whole section is connected to the road, so you can just bring your truck up, drop off those ingredients, and uh, you don't have to carry them very far from your truck or your vehicle, wherever you're bringing them from. It's only a few steps. And then once the flats are up here, with the seedlings on them, then we've got this circular pattern, so you can put them on the cart here, pull the cart around the tables, and drop off the flats where they need to be. So just looking at um, sunlight, so uh, what we did, we're experimenting with a new season extension technique here that we invented here at Clemson. And what we've done is we've put the greenhouses on a slope to the southwest, and basically a slope to the south is going to absorb more heat energy in the wintertime. And the way that works is in the wintertime, the sun is low on the horizon and the southern sky is more like the sun's low on the horizon over there in the wintertime. In the summertime, it's up high like this. So in the wintertime, when the sun is low, say your slope was to the north like this, those solar rays are going to come down and they're just going to not really hit that earth. They're just going to bounce right off. Now, the sun's over here and the slope's like this. As the, sun, as the solar rays come down, you're going to get more solar rays per square foot on that soil or on that greenhouse if it's sloping towards the south. So by sloping it towards a 1% slope towards the south gives you, and you can factor in, you can quantify the energy that you're gaining. So for like a climate like ours in March, every square foot is going to get 15 more BTUs of heat energy in the winter time in March if you're at a 1% slope to the south. So when you map, when you multiply that, 50, that that square that 15 BTUs over the entire square feet of your greenhouse, well then you're talking money. That's like a quarter gallon of propane every day and extra heat and light that you're getting um, for your greenhouse. But stacking functions. Remember, we want each component to serve as many functions as possible, right? That's our goal here: to maximize our energy and reduce our energy consumption and maximize our our, our, our functional elements. So that slope also captures water that comes off the greenhouse. Because the greenhouse is at that slope, 
all the water that comes off flows into ponds that are on the south side of the greenhouse. Now, the sun's low in the, in the horizon on that south side in the winter time, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna reflect off that pond and into the greenhouse to give you more heat and light energy. If, the, if that pond was on the east or the west side of the greenhouse, you'd be getting more light and heat in the summertime. Do you want light and heat in the summer? No, you don't want to heat your greenhouse in the summer. You want to heat it in the winter time. So by placing that appropriately on the south side, you're getting the heat when you need it. And back here behind the greenhouses, these are the ponds he was talking about. Like they reflect heat up into the greenhouse, which I, I didn't know that. And that's pretty cool. It's a neat idea. What else does that pond do? It's going to evaporate. The water's going to evaporate. So in the summertime, water is evaporating from that pond. The air gets sucked in from the from that direction. So that ev evaporation cools the air off. So it's cooling the greenhouse in the summertime, heating it in the wintertime. So it's serving multiple functions, plus all the frogs and the predators that are living in that pond are constantly dispersing out and controlling the pests. So it's also giving you pest control. So that multiple functions, each, each component is doing as many things as possible. That means we don't have to spray pesticides because that's providing the habitat that we need for the predators to control the pests. Okay, y'all see how that works? Okay, so some more stuff. Um, the slope of the greenhouse also helps with cooling in, in our five-stage cooling system. So the first stage opens that vent up there and all the heat just rises out the top. The second stage opens up those vents over there and then cross-ventilation occurs. The third stage, which we're in right now, turns the fan on and closes that vent and pulls even more air through. And then for um, the slope also helps with convective heating. Those 55 gallon drums down there are filled with water. That water acts as thermal mass. So what happens is in the daytime, when it's hot here, the water heats up. And then at nighttime, when it cools off, that heat becomes cooler in here and that becomes the warm point. So that heat is gonna transfer into the greenhouse. So what that heat's gonna do is it's gonna rise to the top point and then fall back down to that point. So because the greenhouse is at a slope, and the heat source is at the lowest point, it creates what's called a convective loop where that heat is then pumped through the entire greenhouse. So if it wasn't on that slope, you wouldn't have that same convective loop and pumping effect that the slope would create. So then for active heating, we've got a hydronic heating system over there where we heat hot water, and then we can pump that hot water to wherever we need it. So instead of heating the entire greenhouse, we can just heat specific areas, which is much more energy efficient. So we can pump the water through the tubing on top of the benches here, and then that heat rises up into the flats, heats the soil where you need it, and then also heats the plants, and that's um, a lot more efficient. So for example, those barrels down there, we calculate to give us up to 9,000 BTUs of heat energy each barrel. So by having you know 11 of those barrels, if you have a, a warm sunny day where it's heating it up a lot in the wintertime, that's equivalent to burning one gallon of propane um, every night that you're just getting for free from those um, from those uh, barrels over there. So I think one of those tanks that are you use for your grill is like burning one of those entire tanks every night. That's what you're capturing um, just from free solar energy.